Good evening, everybody, and you're very welcome to our chat show that's part of my podcast series for Tyrone GAA, Stripped Back. The purpose of this is to sort of strip back the status level and layer of the Tyrone All-Ireland Champions. And I'm joined here by the three Eden Dork men that won two weeks ago in Eden Dork GAC here. It's miserable outside, but that doesn't reflect the happiness that these boys have had for the last couple of weeks. And before we start, I want to give a big shout out to Dara Cullen, our sponsor with Edge Innovit. And I just want to say thank you on our one. So good evening, boys. How's things? Hi, Anna. Good. Hundred percent. Good. How has the come down been for you, Con, since everything happened? Um, I don't think we've actually came down. It's it's quite a surreal feeling. Like um, it was just an unbelievable uh, week leading up to the final, and then. The week after it was just as good, like so. Are you still on the drink? No, I'm off it now. <laughs> Back to club, off it. Have you have you strict order from the club to not be on the drink for a wee while, or are they easy going? <laughs> no, to be honest, I think everybody knows just um, championship coming up, and yeah. it's about two weeks up it, so yeah, the boys kind of take it upon themselves. Because of the whole build up for the championship, now he's probably don't have time to even settle the heads and reflect on what had happened. No. What about not, you now? Not yet. Um, I suppose it was just, I'd been there in 2018 and sort of knew that the week leading up to it, at that stage I sort of tried to blank everything out for us and enjoyed it a lot more this time. And yeah. then the relief at the final whistle and then obviously after it was great getting to celebrate with everybody and especially having three boys mm-hmm. from, the, from our club, not only like on the squad but playing a big role in, in the game. and. Um, as Con says, like back to back to club, and we're brought back by a bang last weekend, getting beat by mm-hmm. down at home. But that's the way it goes, and that's the joys of football. I suppose you're, the important thing is you don't get too high with the highs and too low with the lows. Not what they say. Exactly. What about you in the corner? <laughs> um, yeah, um, it's been incredible the, the last two weeks. You know, leading into the final, as Nas says, he was there in two thousand and eighteen. I I had left the panel, and um, as Nas says. You know, I, I try to take everything in. Every day leading up to that, I tried to in, enjoy it, take in my surrounds, and I felt I did that, you know, um, leading into the final, even the day of the final. I didn't feel n- nervous. Um, I knew there was a job to be done, and I was looking forward to doing that. And, you know, it's just been an un- unbelievable two weeks. You know, the homecoming was incredible, seeing everybody that you knew, especially coming down into the hometown of Eden Dark and then in the Kalinal was just mm-hmm. incredible. And you know, it's just a relief as now said there, you know, all the hard years of sacrifice and hard work finally paying off. Yeah, exactly. So Con Patrick, Niall Morgan and Darren McCurry, three big names all of a sudden. Well not all of a sudden, but it's the fact that the three of you are now together and it's great having you all in the one room because there hasn't been a big chat about the connection between the three of you. So obviously the goal in the final. Do you think that that Nile is part of what you are used to. Like, are you used to doing that on the pitch down here? No, because I'm used to playing outfield. <laughs> um, True. Suppose, uh, like, we've done a lot of work and training on it, um, but it was just great that, you know, the three of us were involved in probably the biggest player of the game. Um, if we could just get Conor McKenna to move Eden Dark, mm-hmm. it would have been uh, even better. But um, no, I don't, don't think it was born out in dark, but it was nice that all three of us were heavily involved. Mm-hmm. It was unbelievable to watch because after you were just trying to win the game, but from a spectator's point of view, it was so succinct, it was smooth, it was slick, and it was great that the three of you were involved in it. Darren, what about um, the sacrifices made this year? So you don't drink for a start, you eat, breathe, sleep, football. How did you find um, moving house recently? Did that interfere with all the preparations? Um, you know, I just approached this year as I did every other year. As you said, sacrifices, not going out, you know, doing whatever needed to be done, especially with Fergal and Brian in this year. Um, I really, really, really put the head down and did everything that needed to be done this year. Um, I knew that it was a new a new start for me, like a, a new slate coming in. And what had been done previously didn't really matter anymore. So I was just excited, looking forward to getting to getting started. Um, I knew there was a lot of success in this team. There was a, a great team. So I was just looking forward to get 
to get and go on. And as you said, moving into the house was obviously great with my fiance Ria. Um, it's been coming a long time. I was waiting in the house for ages, but finally got everything in. And I think that kind of settled me because I was kind of at that age where I was ready to move out of the house and maybe getting just maybe stressed um, still being at home and just kind of wanted my, my own space. So I think that definitely helped uh, give me my own space. And um, as you said, um, everything worked out. Had a great year and the team had a great year. So very thankful for that. And Con, you're new enough to the team, and you're the younger one of the two veterans here. No offence, boys. Mm-hmm. How do you think you've um, sort of grown as a person the last year or two in the Throne squad? Do you feel that you've really stepped up in every aspect? Well, yeah, like as you said, I was brought in last year um, under Mickey, and I had a few games under under him, and then at the end of the year didn't really go as planned. Whenever we came back from the club, I didn't really get much game time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I knew if Mickey had to stay or if we got new management in, I had to put the work in and, and start again. Um, and Brian and Fergal had taken us in under 21, so I kind of knew the two boys before they came in. I knew what they were about and I knew that if I wasn't putting the work in and, and doing what they were telling me and looking me to do, then I wouldn't play. Um, I think this year it was quite hard at the start of the league. I wasn't really getting any game time and it definitely took its effect on me and I definitely had a good few couple of conversations with a few boys um, and then I just, I just went to the management and was like what do I have to do to get into the team and, and the, they told me and I took it on board and I worked hard and I got into the 26 then for the carry game and I got four or five minutes and I was delighted with that because I hadn't made the squad for the first three games and I knew the championship was two or three weeks away so um, again I just put the head down even more and, and Tried to prove myself to them that I want to be, I want to be here not just to make up the numbers but to, to be a part of the team and, and to play as much as possible. So, and what I have to mention the macho moment of the All Ireland final? Did you know the camera would be on you taking yes, that tap yeah, on? Yeah, that is a fact. This was planned. He was rehearsing the room and everything. <laughs> he definitely did more All Ireland final. Yeah, it was so seductive and slow. It was oh, slow no, motion. I was waiting for the ear coupling and the music and the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am. You can be honest now. Did you know what was happening? <laughs> well, I didn't know I was going to get busted. Uh, and then he ripped my jersey and sure, what was I going to do? Put, put the new jersey over the ripped one? But, um, Fair enough. Did you expect it to go viral though? Nah, I didn't even, like obviously the week after we kind of weren't our phones and we were just kind of partying. But mm-hmm. I think that that next weekend I kind of hit home because people were tagging me and uh, it just uh, puts me in the heart. So. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. It'll definitely, if, if you ever like get married or anything, it'll be definitely oh, on the no. screen in it's the background. Bla- I walked into actually, actually work and it was plastered all over every wall and <laughs> it just, Brilliant. I couldn't wait to rip them down. Like. Yeah. <laughs> These all grew up together and have played together through all the years. So have you seen you two a bigger change in Con the last year? Like, have you really seen him mature or not? <laughs> through his fault? In gameplay, like, like Con will have obviously been known out here to be, you know, he's, he is a quality player and but probably would have been known more for, you know, big catches and big moments in games. But this year he's worked really hard and sort of changed the game his style a wee bit and um, I, th- I think even in particular this Kerry semi-final you didn't feel like you had your best game but like some me it's done behind the play and sees the work rate that's going on um, I probably really are probably seen that you know yes he didn't make big high catches or go on the big long bunt- busting runs that were used to out here but he done a real team job and maybe that's something that he, he wouldn't have been known for as such mm-hmm. we know that he can do it but and I think that's the biggest difference that Brian and Fergal seen on him the day that he came on Kerry and Killarney like the game was was well over but he came on and he worked hard and that five or six minutes probably got him his opportunity against Calvin mm-hmm. and um, that's just down to pure attitude change and and as you say maturing it's good to see us actually compliment each other because through the years he's just give each other dogs if he's like that. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> you said in one of the podcasts that Darren was one of your idols. That was very nice to hear because all you ever hear is you slagging uh, each other. Well, but. like me and 
Darren would have been kicking about at the pitch from no age. Like I had a, left my footballs here and cycled up from home. Like my house is about three miles away, and I suppose like if anybody had entered the gates, Darren could see them from the house. And we'd have spent a lot of days kicking about when we were younger, and even whenever I just passed my driving test, spinning about and <laughs> stuff like that. And, <laughs> <laughs> Um, and Con wasn't even born yet. <laughs> um, and like I seen the work that he's put in, and um, I think people sort of think that like we're both probably a bit flashy on the pitch, um, and people just think that um, there's this thing that people talk about natural talent, but there's there really is no such thing. And we have worked so hard to to get to where we are, and Con's obviously the same. And but we've put in so many hours here together that. Like I do look up to him because um like what he's done for our club. Um he was on the panel before me with Throne and it was something then that whenever I was asked to come in, Darn was already there and if he hadn't been there I probably wouldn't have went. Um so it's like just because somebody's younger than you doesn't mean that you can't uh, look up to them too, like. I think it's just, you know I think overall the three of us have just a great respect for each other, you know, as Nav said just Knowing that the sacrifices each of us have made and the hard work we, we have put in, you know, endless hours out in that pitch, and it's just great that the three of us are, you know, playing an all iron final day together. You know, it might never happen for Eden Dark again. You know, who's who to know what the future holds? So, like, it, it is really such a special moment for the three of us to be playing that day and for all the three of us to play so well. You know, and it, mm. it probably hasn't hit home and, and it mightn't for years to years to come like but it's just you know unbelievable just to share the field with, with your three mates that you've grown up with and played with so oh, it is special it's so rare so you just, whenever you just have a minute you just need to reflect and be like this is brilliant it's really really uncommon so Niall you're obviously a very good speaker and you've had plenty of press and attention but people tend to think that you're just very football and family orientated but for those listening and watching Niall also has other special talents if you remember Niall was um, Robbie Williams and <laughs> in st- <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it was 2011 Eden Dork um, GSE done Stars and Rise as a fundraiser and Niall was uh, Robbie Williams mixed reports about the performance but do you think that give you a wee bit of a uh, push Niall for the performance side of things wanting to perform <laughs> <laughs> or the limelight, yeah. Uh, that all came out of obviously, like the club done a lot of things, like a lot of fundraiser, and I was never really involved, and I was probably a bit young still, and I was actually in teaching practice in Eden Dark at that stage, uh, so it wasn't probably the ideal performance. To do <laughs> but uh, D- Daddy would have been like would have sang in the house and stuff, but he wouldn't have done it in public, mm-hmm. and I sort of wanted to dig him on, and he says, "Well, I'll do it if you do it," um, but. Like he can half sing like and I can't like so and then the throat started to get very dry and uh, it was it was good crack but you were part of it as well, Emma, so you've seen all the crack that we had at the rehearsals and stuff like so yeah. it was well worth it. Mightn't been able to sing, but sure it was good crack. You were, you were singing and Tommy's that night it wasn't too bad. <laughs> it wasn't great. Uh, I was singing along, uh, <laughs> the hand was shaking oh, I was singing along, I'm, 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 I'm a leg was shaking. <laughs> shaking. See, even if you were doing it sober, like it's a whole yeah. lot more different. <laughs> that night doing stars in the eyes, like I, we we had a game the next day. We played a hard down here the next day, and uh, the management had sort of said the boys that are performing, like you know, no drinking, like. Mm-hmm. So I didn't drink, and there the next day realised that like they scored a forty-five directly into the net, and how and Mark stand the line, and neither of them could see. So. I know. <laughs> Uh, I was the only mug that, that didn't bother drinking, like, and I think that that hampered the performance, like. Yeah, but you don't like to go out too much, like you do, like to keep have your nights in, and you wouldn't be as mad as Con here for a night out. No, so. these two boys like their nights out, and it was never really my thing. Like I would have went out a bit whenever I was younger on a Friday night, but it wouldn't been a big party, or I don't really like a dance floor or anything Make like that. Scene. Just sort of stay at the bar, like, or stay out of the road and just watch everything that's going yeah. on and. Oh. Take it in and talk to anybody. So I like, <laughs> yeah, like I'd, I'd take a night in a wee bar with a bit of yeah. music over a nightclub anytime. Like, and um, I suppose just now with two young kids and stuff as well, like it's just even less opportunity mm-hmm. to get out. Just unlike Darren here, that doesn't need any drink to party yeah, on dance on night <laughs> <laughs> for everybody's eyes. Thankfully, he's not going to perform for us. Um, how do you? 
like to have a bit of downtime, Con, what's your idea of not being focused on football all the time? To be honest, I don't really, I like always being busy, like it's yeah. calling around to somebody's house or going for a spin or doing something, like I don't like really sitting in the house. Mm -hmm. The odd time I would do. I was at Gotham. I'm better than Morgan for the record. <laughs> McCurry, I take off. I got time to go. If you don't work. <laughs> you, I work more than you. Uh -huh. <laughs> I work more than you. Did you work last week? Yes. On the week before? Eh, uh, no. <laughs> exactly. Are you working yet? I <coughs> flat out, I was back Monday after the Iron Final. No. Uh, I was. <laughs> Well, were you back? Are you back too now? Just yeah, the week. Did you get the week off? Got or? the week off. Yeah, Prince right. gave me the week off, so it was good. Brilliant. <coughs> and Con, your dad played for Trone too, as everybody knows. Would he give you much advice or support, or what's the torture? Maybe it's the word. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I tried to drop in wee hints of advice and, and areas that, that I maybe could improve on, or or something that I'd maybe done wrong and right in the game, um, that he had seen or whatever, um. Look, I try to take advice on f from everybody, um, because they're not trying to they're trying to make you better at the end of the day, and, and they're seeing maybe slight improvements that'll add to your game and, and bring you on. And um, so, whoever that is that is giving you advice, I, I try to take it on board. And whether it works out or not is, is a different story. But now he's definitely always there f for me in terms of football and stuff. And he's he's obviously been there and, and done it before I was about. So. And what about your brother Neely? He's obviously a great talent. Is there much competition in the house, or do you help each other improve your uh, skills? We've got a competition. Like um, <laughs> obviously he was involved with under twenty ones for a couple of years and missed out on his all iron final because he had COVID or whatever. But look, I think if he puts the work in as well, um, he won't be far away. I, th I think he's he's come on, he's grew a bit, and, and went to the gym and stuff. So he's definitely on the right track. Um, to get where he wants to be and it's just about putting the hard yards in again and, and getting your opportunity and, and taking it. And it's crazy to think that it could be in a couple of years that these are both lifting Sam McGuire because like, there's definitely contention for a few more in this team. Like It's ridiculous the talent and the hard work that goes in. Darren, do you find um, that Fergal and Brian gave you a new lease of life or what did you find really improved for you with the new setup? I definitely, as I said, I felt like I was coming into a clean slate. Um, you know, the thing I found with Brian and Fergal is that they put their trust in me. You know, um, I think that the scene, that the hard work that I'd, that I had done in pre-season and th and th throughout the year, you know, and I think that was shown in my league in my league performances. You know, I thought I had a real a, a real strong. League campaign, um, scoring free kicks and points from play and setting up a lot of scores when our backs were again the wall a lot of them games and I felt like I stood up and I think that they seen that there so and then leading into the championship you know after the Calvin game I had a good day and Donegal um, I really thought that they, that they had my, had my back in and leading into that Jerry game, the All-Ireland semi-final, where, you know, I, I hadn't maybe a great first half like I had in the rest of the, the games, you know, and maybe other managers in the past would have hooked me at half time. But, you know, the mindset I was in, I knew that they trusted me. I knew that I wasn't going to be, I wasn't going to be pulled off. I knew that I was going to be given the opportunity in the second half to have a better performance. and. That's massive, especially for a forward and a confidence player. Not worrying about that, you know. In years come by, you know, maybe I would have thought if you know if I wasn't playing uh, playing well, you'd be looking over at the sideline, going, "Am I getting taken off here?" Nearly feeling under pressure. And for a forward, that's something that is something very hard to deal with. And when you have a management that completely trusts you and won't take you off until it's really time to be taken off, well, that's massive. And for a boy like me, that that is all about confidence, you know, that can only be a good thing. And I think that helped me leaps and bounds, you know, and in the second half in the Curry game, you know, I said to myself at half time and a couple of the players came around me and said, this is going to work out for you, you know, and my, my, that was my mindset. You know, I, I knew in the second half that I was going to come out, I was going to kick a, a couple of points and he was going to get the opportunity. And uh, the All-Ireland final then, you know, um, 
I was reading st- st- stuff that, you know, people were doubting me. People maybe thought that I wasn't going to start the final because I got the Black Jordan semi final. And even though I kicked a couple of points, people thought maybe Cal was going to start. So I had a point to prove going into that f- final. And I was full of confidence, you know, I knew it was going to happen for me on the day. I knew I had the hard work done. And, you know, the mindset I was in that day, there was nobody going to going to stop me and going to st- uh, stop it et- at own. And I think that came from Fergal and Brian putting that trust in me and me. Yeah. yeah so. so, yeah, self-belief is integral for the whole team and individuals. So hats off to you. And it was so obvious when the match was on that the belief was there and you all bounced off each other perfectly. So just congrats again. Now, in terms of nicknames, we'll get back to younger nicknames. But what do you think about King Kong? <laughs> I think I would have Did he? Uh, nah, I'm not. Two boys would give it to him. No! No! I'm making up lies here about Conor Gormley give it to him or something, but I, it was deaf. Who, no, who, who gave it to you? Yourself, actually? No, I think it was just that night, whoever came up with it here at the mm-hmm. club. Um, it stuck. Probably Dark Holland or somebody like that there, trying to take the piss out of him. Mm-hmm. But, um, no, I don't really read too much into it. Like, um, I've had a few worse ones in the past, and I think I'll keep them out of it. But, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> PG ones uh, had you any growing up because I don't know the, like that's the boys things stick to themselves apart from the dads are like what were <laughs> why I think it was a ship in my head <laughs> so that was your name yeah. around the Dork team uh, no, no I didn't really get it in Dork like, it didn't really stick up here uh, more got it in, in Derryville where I was from uh, like uh, we would have kicked about around the, around the park and somebody Called me it one day and just stuck like, <laughs> but like, it's actually a Lahorn family would still call me it like, and they're about the only ones that that it stuck with like. So, yeah. thankful, yeah. thankfully, like it's That's not. Freaking try and drive the ball or something. <laughs> Fun like, hey, call the peanut. <laughs> Innocent. Do you any bad ones or no? Black Panther. Dazzler was the only one, <laughs> and I did not come up with the name Dazzler. Connor Gormley <laughs> came up with the name Dazzler. Nice. Would you know it? You want to keep it. That's a great name, isn't it? <laughs> That was all the thing. <laughs> <laughs> what about um, Niall, your stag? Because you're a big family man now, and we'll get to that. But any PG stories from the stag? I just want to know about the crack that you have among you. Because you're Ferdinand Brand, 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 Brand didn't let didn't get, but uh, we went and yeah, you're only a youngster. I, keep forgetting they're old boys. I have, a, I have a cousin by McGree, and he started uh, in the darn at the, like from the minute we get onto the bus, Barry was eating at darn like just constantly and. On the pla- up, or? I, no, I just kept basically saying how much he loved him, like, <laughs> and uh, but but on the plane on the way over, Darren came down to me and he says, uh, "I think this boy's taking the hand out of me." Like, he says, "Like if he doesn't settle, I'm gonna chop him." <laughs> and I says, "No, look, he's actually being serious. He's just really excited that you're you're here, like." So on the last day uh, or on the Saturday night, we went for a, a Chinese, and uh, twenty six out of the twenty seven made it to the feed. Uh, the best man didn't make it. <laughs> um, so Barry uh, got a cake sent out for, for Darren for his birthday, even though it wasn't his birthday. And uh, then he got the end of my cousin's wedding ring <laughs> and oh, went down <laughs> and knelt down beside Darren and held up the ring and asked him would he be his best friend. <laughs> well, it's bad because actually, the first day I was actually going to kill him. <laughs> I remember he was sitting bes- behind me in the plane screaming Dazzler Dazzler and he, he was kind of drunk and I mind turned around and said if you don't sit down I'm gonna <laughs> knock you out <laughs> right but then that night and the days after we actually became really really close and the best crack friends. was ah oh, the crack was unbelievable <laughs> yeah. and that's why you get down one day and propose we we're best friends by the end of the holiday we just become best friends <laughs> we're just best friends class very good and any word on your stag or when it's going to be when's the wedding April April yeah in, in Italy, Italy. Malfi Coast so brilliant yeah. Stressful times. Um, we really, <laughs> really had to get going away in these, yeah, yeah. <laughs> these expansive places uh, and me rust. having rust. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Any money there? <laughs> um, I but I wait right, enough edge. <laughs> I um, stag do. Well, I was hoping to go to Ibiza. Obviously with whole COVID, now can't really do that now. So I think I'm just going to go down to Galway or something yeah. for maybe one or two nights if Colin will pay for it. So. Looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> I had up three or four nights. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So uh, it's not all serious football and Nicky's like, know how to have fun, which is really important. But you have two kids, Niall, and do you think 
becoming a dad changed you personally, like personality, outlook, goals? How did it change you? Like, I would have been always, like, football, golf. Like, that's why I don't really go out, because I tend to spend my free time in the golf course. Um, I don't want to take a hand going out then at night too, so... Um, but whenever the two kids came along, it did change things and it did limit time. I still play plenty of golf and the boys wind me up a bit, uh, still getting to play. But it's a, it changes your perspective on things and you realise that, yes, football is important and work's important and, you know, progressing in your career and stuff's important. But, you know, at the end of the day, you're going home to two young children who you have to be a role model for and like after the final whistle in the the final I went to my dad first because I had made a promise to him that someday I'd win all iron but then I just started across to Hogan to get Christy onto the pitch because like it just felt it was going to be a great moment to have him there and like he might never play football you know you don't know there's that many things for kids now so I don't know whether he'll even want to play football or what he'll want to do whenever he gets older but I always had that moment where the two of us were running about Croke Park together, carefree, and you know, if you go on a tour, you can't even get on the grass. So, like, we'll always have that moment where we we basically just played and in Croke Park together, like, and you know, that's a bit like winning. Like, it's something that nobody can ever take away from you, and it was re really, really special. The picture of you, Con, on the pitch, sitting down just with your fists, complete and utter contentment. Yeah. How was that? We're going around the pitch for you because the M boys have been there a lot more days than you have. So, yeah, I'm not even there. You know what I mean? No, um, it's, yeah. it's mental. Like I was in the crowd in 2018, mm. watching them play against Dublin, and I, I, part of me was like, I want to be there, uh, and like I just have to work hard. And I think I was kind of got my injury around that time, and and so whenever, yeah. yeah. So whenever like Mackey rang me, he said, we've been looking at you the year before, but you got the injury, and then kind of part of me watching the game was like, maybe I could have, could have been there, but um, like I remember the Ulster final was the first time I, I played in Croke Park, and I just I just stood in the middle of the pitch during the warm-up and, and looked all around me and tried to take it all in, and I did it again against Kerry, um, and then again in the final, because you never know, like it could be your last time ever on a pitch, and I just wanted to take it all in, um, and then at the end, I was just sitting, sitting down. I was just content and looking at the fans cheering and, and everybody else running around you celebrating. Um, I just definitely wanted to, to kind of capture that moment, mm -hmm. and, and just so that I can remember it for for the rest. Yeah, photos captured. Yeah. Like, no, that no, was smart. What about playing <clears throat> along? Like you play along with all the Tyrone boys, but see Tyrone Senior Championship. We all know how competitive it is, and it's a fist fight. How do you con? find fighting maybe literally among those boys in the different clubs and then play, being friends with them in the Toronto squad I think the, the biggest thing is that everybody has massive respect for each other and um, obviously you're with them boys definitely this year more than you're with your club mates like mm -hmm. so but look at the end of the day the clubs where your football starts and, and your teammates at your club are, are who drive you on to, to get onto the county team and um, if you didn't have a club, you wouldn't get that opportunity with Tron. So it's kind of, in a in a way, a lot more important mm -hmm. because you you want to succeed with your club as, as just as much as, as the county. But like even before I got called up to the Tron team, like whenever we played the likes of Kalina or Trillick in the championship, mm -hmm. like I never really feared marking them boys because I knew in myself that it was good enough and. Like everybody would say, oh, you're marking like Maddie Donnelly today or Hamshi or somebody, but I knew that I could definitely put up a good um, fight with them. And if it was a May game, then I definitely could maybe come out on top. Um, but it's, it's weird. Me and Big Brand lined out against each other a week after the All Iron final, like we'd been preparing for the, the whole championship. And Took a half each. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was weird. Like we had a few jokes and, and smiles and stuff on the pitch but at the end of the day I wanted to win the game and he wanted to win the game and he, he came out on the right side on the day but it's just all about driving your club and, and trying to get the best out of the boys that you come back home to play with. Do you find it weird fellas or <coughs> you just used to it at this stage? No, you know as Con says when you 
when you're up at the throne, and especially this year, you know, the bond that group is really, it's unbelievable, you know, everybody up there are so tight, you know, you, you couldn't say a bad word about any of them, everybody gives a massive commitment, so everybody has a massive re re respect, but when you come back to club, you know, you know, you want to win every game, you know, especially championship, you know, the main prize is the is the O'Neill Cup, and if them men happen to be there on your in your way, you walk over the top of them, and that's just the way it is. And I think any throne man up there would say the exact same thing. You know, the club is where you start, and it's where you're gonna finish at the end of the day. And yeah. my aim is to win as much as I can from a club, and that's what I intend to do. Exactly. Now, do you share lifts the training, or because you live in Cookstown now, do you all no, go separately? No, still share. I, I meet the boys usually at Darren's house. and Always late, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, well, obviously, we, we genuinely couldn't share then because of COVID, but uh, I think it's, in particular for me, I find it great because, like, Con and Darren and Jake and Connor and all them boys, they hang about with each other regularly, whereas because I am that wee bit older and because I do live in Cookstown, I don't get to spend as much time with them. And I think that's where I maybe differ to the boys, whereas whenever I come back to the club, you know, it's it's a big deal for me because um, I feel like I'm nearly out of it a bit. Like, just being my age and uh, yeah. be, being, <laughs> I, but like I'm a couple of years older than most of the team, like, and apart from Crippy and Potty, obviously, they're about five or six years older than me, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, don't, don't make sure that part says it. Uh, but like you, you feel like you're out of it a wee bit. So it, I love getting back to the club and hearing the crack and having the crack to the boys and then traveling the train. Like it'd probably be quicker for me just to be it on myself. But I just find class to be able to travel up and see what the crack is and sort of stay in the loop and um, just get chatting with people really. Like and you know the three of us get on really well and. We have our rows at times and you know, but on the way down the road we'll, 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 we'll get on with it. Why what's the difference? I will like I like I like <laughs> slow music that's that's normal and you go up in the car. That's the normal. thing is, right? We're going to train here right for a slog oh, I'm I always Christy Moore and I wanna get psyched, let's go. No, no. Whenever Darren gets into anybody else's car, Darren falls asleep straight away. <laughs> right? And he always sits in the front seat, winds it back, falls asleep. And me and Con's having a conversation through the, the mirror. And then you get into Darren's car and you're maybe racked Christy or Maisie <laughs> up all night. And straight away, he is the music blurring, the windows down. You think you're diving through Miami or something. <laughs> and you can't, you couldn't even dare to close your eyes because <laughs> the, brakes uh, be the brakes would be on. And like, you know, he just doesn't think about all people a lot. Like, you know? <laughs> I've done that <laughs> I'd be more inclined to have the same music taste as you now. Are you yeah. similar, Con, to Darren? Just the yeah, Darren. Get psyched. It's just sort of music, yes. No, I had a tax call well, for Martin taxed me for my playlist. For a screenshot for his playlist just for the gym like. <laughs> I don't have a clue about all that sort of music. Like it sounds good in the gym like gets you going, but in it's the car I like to sing along with like, it. If I had like a camera up in the <laughs> front dash, you know, the amount mm -hmm. of money you'd make off YouTube, oh, yeah. the yeah. you get the conversations oh, uh, you have, it is it yeah, it's that's, crack. That's one of the best things, you know, travel up yeah. the is just the crack is just unbelievable yeah. stories you come out with, you know. Something you have for years and years. Yeah. yeah, but the bond between you is special, and the more you practice, the better you get. Obviously, so you bring that onto the field. You see each other so much, mm -hmm. so it definitely shows in the in the season this year that you just had a good connection. Going up to Kivahi then with all the tunes and stuff. Do you row? Me and Colin probably would row more than no, I don't know. Darren would really row anybody. Me and Colin would like get at each other, but. Like at the end of it, it's Friday done. Night. Like end of a session, it's done. Like yeah. and we're both old enough now, and I'm mature enough to know when it ends. Con still getting there. Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he's, 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 he's a child. He always has to get the last word, no, and then I get the blame I, for it. I'm I'm ridiculously competitive. Like they both have to get the last that. word. Okay. And then I come in. I said it. Not said no, you're that. the hero. <laughs> I I am ridiculously competitive, and it doesn't matter who I'm with in the pitch. Like I just expect. Like, I suppose, going back to the sacrifice and walking out of the house and leaving care with two kids, sometimes you feel like boys aren't putting in the effort. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not a con, like, that's just in general. And sometimes you... Nice uh, but, but sometimes <laughs> you, you feel like, you know, I'm... You almost feel like you're giving up more than what other people are, even though you're not, like, because... 
I'm probably home from work a bit earlier than boys and stuff. Um, and Four, what are you not? I meet yes. Darren every day on the way home from work, and he nods as if he he's he he works late. He eight half eight, half eight. Um, that wasn't even a job. But, <laughs> but sometimes you feel like you're making more sacrifices and then you're you're like, what am I even doing here? If boys are going to mess about for or if boys aren't taking it serious or if they're not working hard and then the flip side of that again, because I'm standing that, they're probably thinking that I have the, the easy job. Like, and uh, But I'm just so competitive and I don't make any apologies for that. It doesn't matter who you are. Like, If I think you're not putting in the effort and that includes management or anything like I, I'll not be afraid to, to call people out and I'm, I'm headstrong enough and probably experienced enough to not be afraid to, to say what I think and but that's a good um, trait to have but it's just competitiveness like and then at times it, you get that mad that you start having the war words and then I do saying? like getting the last word I'll we'll not get into what they said <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no I'd rather you don't I could just left on, on the pitch at the end of the day like yeah. just trying to get the better for the team and, and individually, like so. But even in club games, you would both be, I don't know if hot headed is the word, but you would be, you would make your voice known. So is there similar uh, in that just, regard? It's just competitiveness, like, yeah. it's, like I say, I don't make any apologies for it. It's different if I was, you know, saying they're despite or being like hateful to people because I didn't like them or something. I never would say anything bad to uh, anybody I'm marking or anything or don't get involved in rows or anything like that. But it's just, I just expect everybody in the teams that I play in just to give their best and they say it doesn't matter whether it's the management, myself, players around me, subs, people in the crowd, whatever, I just expect everybody to give their best. That's good, but you have to be your own character, like, there's no point yeah. trying to hide anything. Well, well, 15 boys that are the same would be a very boring team. Like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Basically, yeah. yeah. You're the quiet one, Darren. Uh-huh. Darren just goes about his business in the pitch, like, to be fair to him, he doesn't say much. Like, and, <laughs> <laughs> Off the pitch, he does turn it off. Or if his man starts talking to me and do better talking back. Better talking back. I know, so even the three of you, like your personalities are so different, but just all get on really, really well. So it's good to have a variety. He's the dad. I'm the dad, yeah. Not my daddy. Do you think you have a good few years left in you now regarding Tro? Not Jeez. due to your age. So many people have started to ask me about but it's, uh, it's due to how, how long I've got left and stuff like that. It's, um, it doesn't, it's different because you're a goalkeeper as well. Uh, it's with I'm the kids. But no, I'm, I'm embracing the getting a bit older. I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, look, I take every year as it comes. I didn't even know why I was going to play this year, and I did. And, you, you know, I feel like I've at least a couple of years in me, but that's entirely up to Brian and Fergal now at this stage. If I always said that if I, I wasn't starting for Throne, I wouldn't go because... I play out field for the club and I'd prefer to play out for the club than sit on the bench mm-hmm. anywhere like and <clears> you know I, I kind of feel like I've unfinished business at soccer as well that I'd like to go back yeah. and play a couple of seasons and um, but I just I'm really am playing it by year like and just seeing how things go and if if I wasn't enjoying it I wouldn't be there and I'm loving it at the minute so I've, I've a few years left me yet I think yeah absolutely that's nothing to do with your age yeah, it's yeah. just because of the children because <laughs> I'm barely wa- able to walk <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody asked me that question because I look so young oh, even it. though everybody I everybody still thinks you're only about 21 22 like. I'm there from 2012 and I still look at you there's only two years between you isn't there one what? Uh, one school year uh-huh. but it doesn't even count two, two, two football you're years. approaching that milestone there no I'm not Did you're already there I, I feel and look like a 22 year old you say that every time. <laughs> that's the truth, that's right. <laughs> Von Wilder. <laughs> Moisturiser and we, yes, uh, whitening your teeth. <laughs> what else do you do? Are you some way to talk about big teeth? I'm a nation there with one of the new teeth. You're on. Oh, you should have brought that up. I should have brought that up. I don't know what you're on about. <laughs> what? You're the same. Wait, no, natural. You all look lovely. Um, Con, how good do you think the club has been for you the past couple of years? So it's, a, it's not the biggest club, but in terms of community and mm-hmm. getting everything together and keeping it afloat, Eden Dorks, pretty good. Do you feel they've been very supportive of you? Yeah, I think they have. Um, obviously, this year we're getting to the final and, and Ulster final and stuff. Like, I remember even before I made the panel, like, Older boys like the McGuckins and Spud Murphy and stuff were coming up to me and, and saying like if you put the work in like there's no reason why you can't be playing alongside these two boys in Tyrone. Um, and I think even if you asked anybody to do anything for you, um, 
like like a BP or a Dark Holland or anybody, like the world that would do it for you without even questioning why you want it done. Um, it's just it's just a great great club, and everybody kind I think kind of has each other's back and looks out for each other, and we've seen that with many things that have gone on in the past. Um, and it's we're kind of obviously representing the club, so we try to to act as they would want us to. And <clears throat> I think this year we kind of made everybody proud that that Eden Dorsch kind of on the on the map, not just in Tyrone but in in Ireland. Um, so I think we just have to carry that on and also help the younger generation coming up because we all were that age one, at one stage looking up and that's why nobody like everybody thinks we're tortured with signatures and photographs and all but at the end of the day we were the them boys looking up mm -hmm. to the older um throne seniors back back in 03 05 and 08 like so it's never never um uh, it's a reason, aye. Yeah. It's <laughs> <a burden. laughs> I think that's massive, but you know what Con says about the next generation, you mm -hmm. know, when when I was growing up down at the house, 10, 11, 12, you know, somebody I looked up to was Brian McGuckin because, you know, he was always up at the field practicing and I would, I'd actually be looking out the window for him at the weekend because I knew he'd be up at the field. And that's, Brian McGrew did to you. <laughs> yes, and I'd be up at the field just kicking balls out to him and, you know, he probably installed that thing of me getting up and starting to practice because I seen him doing it and, and then I seen what he produced at the weekend for, for Eden Dark and Throne. So, you know, I kind of feel growing up that it's our job as well to set the example for the next generation. So if I'm up here practicing every weekend, two or three times a week, you know, hopefully them younger lads will see that that's how to be successful playing, playing Gaelic football that you have to put in in, in the hard work so hopefully between the three of us you know we've kind of set a bench or set a, a a mark or a good what would you say a good example, example yeah. for them ones growing up and knowing that they have to put in the hard work and if they do that they're you know there's great things down the line for them yeah, absolutely last year's league game against Kerry that was moved to here the picture of you with the children is class and the smiles and the happiness in your faces is brilliant. Um, how do you feel about all the youngsters around the club? Like, do you feel, because remember I was growing up and we were growing up, sorry, uh, like you looked up to Andy McGillney and all those boys and now you are the local celebs and it's weird that the children are coming up, why well, I got a picture with Niall and Con and Darren because it doesn't feel like you're just celebrities to me but you have such an effect on young people so each of you, is, what one piece of advice would you give to any aspiring boy or girl um, footballer that really wants to hit the top? Um, well, for me, um, my one bit of advice would be that you're going to have good days and bad days and you're going to have more setbacks probably than you are glory days. Um, I think this is evident this year um, where I didn't play any league and I played the championship, but... It's just about putting the head down um, and going to the pitch and practicing or eating right, sleeping right, going to the gym. It's just like the wee small things that nobody sees yeah. makes a, a big impact um, and can be the difference in, in winning and losing. So just say to keep the head up um, and kind of maybe evaluate like what it is that went wrong and how you can fix it. And then the things that went right, how do you keep it at that level and improve? So that would be me. Like you've had a good few setbacks now and some have tormented you for a few years. So what's your piece of advice? Um, I think like I'm probably like I teach a lot of the young ones mm -hmm. and I've been teaching in dark now for this is my eighth year. <laughs> and in there and you, like so I've basically seen through a whole year group from P1 to P7 now and you come across a lot of the young ones that play for Eden Dark and the ones that are at all clubs you're trying to poach them and get them up to Eden Dark and they uh, the one thing that I say even in the classroom is just practice because like no matter what you want to be able to do it in life you have to practice um, like right down to the, the weekly spelling test like you know if you want to get them right you have to practice them if you want to get better at reading you have to practice you know and you're you're trying to feed that mindset into everybody not just the footballers that you know the only way to get better at anything is to practice nobody's born with any right to be like in our position a uh, like just because your dad was a county footballer doesn't mean that you're going to get there. And I think, you know, hearing people saying to Colin about his dad playing, sometimes I get a wee bit frustrated at that because it's almost as if 
oh, your dad was a county player, so you had the right to, to go and do that. Like, and even you hear it about all players and you're thinking, that's absolutely not true. There's plenty of county players that sons uh, don't even play football. So it's, it has to be all about practice and practicing with the purpose as well, not just, you know, going to the pitch and standing the corner flag and kicking balls or hitting aimless targets or doing silly things. Like Darren saying about the amount of times he spends up here practicing, but it's all methodical, like, and taking notes of where he's scoring from and where he needs to get better from and feeding it in from the matches. You know, if he missed with his right foot from a certain position, you can guarantee the next day he'll be up here kicking with his right foot from that position again. And um, it's the same with me at kickouts, like, um, if something goes wrong at the weekend, then I train that week, that's what I'm focusing on, fixing it. And it, it has to be practice. Like you, you have no God-given right to be good at something. It's it's all about practice and getting getting better yourself and putting in the work. Brilliant. Yeah. Last but not least. Um. Yeah. Mine would be similar to Nalzer. You know, practicing is key. You know, really, and sacrificing whatever needs to be done to get to that place that you need to be. You know, growing up. That's all I thought about was practicing and getting better and being the best. You know, you can say that's selfish, but I knew if I was up here practicing and um, sacrificing come game day that I could score 10 or 11 or 12 points, which would, could, which would be the difference and win that game. And obviously the, the, the team would win then. And I think we got, you know, great su success from, from that growing up. You know, we, we had a unbelievable youth youth team there and we won everything going right up from from underage um, and I think the other thing was that parents have a massive role to play you know growing up my dad was so important in my practicing you know as Niall says you can be down here just I see ones down here just kicking ball and they're not properly practicing where dad would have come down from the age of 13 to I'd say I was 21 and he would be kicking balls into me constantly maybe 15 balls in a row and that was happening twice a week for a number of years every week like there was no break and that was massive and his advice and guidance over them years were key like even after games he would say stuff that needed to be worked on I think you need to do this and do this because sometimes it's hard to analyze a game by not watching the video work so my advice would be is to parents to get involved, to help them out as much as you, 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 th that they can. And for the player themselves, if they really want to reach the top, that they have to put in the work. And there's no doubt if you put in the work, it'll pay off. And I think all three of us are evident of that there. Big time. And that, all that's good advice because children will be watching this league because they're big fans. Uh, I just want to do a quick fire round to finish and it'll not be anything bad, just about the throne team in general. So <laughs> you all have different Maybe opinions. <laughs> <laughs> well, negative maybe. Um, who has the worst music taste in the throne team? Morgan. <laughs> I don't think I do, but everybody would say I do like, so it doesn't bother me. Like. <laughs> everybody likes the beats like Morgan in front of us. And I like it. I just don't. <laughs> I'm just not in it. Like, I just... Could listen to Christy Moore all day every day. Like, wouldn't He's me, getting like, some shout out tonight, isn't um, he? Like Christy, if you're listening, like, <laughs> you <know. laughs> I did name my son after. Like. <laughs> True. Yeah. <laughs> his playlist one. His play, playlist. It's probably play, like, similar to mine. Iron Man's playlist. Wasn't listening hardcore when I ran. Oh, I can imagine driving to be a vet like and <laughs> listening to Scooter. Slapping <laughs> sheep over his head. Come on. <laughs> Who is the not the party animal, but the one that we get everybody going. Not necessarily for a match, but just in general. Aye. Oh, you're only. Ronan O'Neill. Ronan's in the Dax at the minute, and his tunes are good. Like. Brilliant. Yeah. His dance moves, not too bad at also. I well, I can't even ask who's the best dancer because he's going to say himself. Hamsi's <laughs> pretty good too. Hamsi's. Is for, he? For somebody who's got a lot of muscle, like Hamsi. <laughs> he's got a wee move and he, he was trying to teach me the mulligans at I swear. Where Have you seen it there? Go on, yeah, let's go on. on. No, go I, I haven't practiced in about two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> but we're outside mulligans and uh, he's this move. I don't know what it is anyway, but it's class. It looks like he's gliding on the ground, flicking back. So he says, how do you do that there? So me and him, Polly was teaching me this move outside Mulligans and me, I was practicing for 10 or 15 minutes after. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you get it better. See, practice. Practice? Practice. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the messiest? 
Sorry. Most... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> For those who don't know who that is, who's that? No, it's Yeah. It's just... He just goes about his business, like, and, <laughs> you know, even we always wind him up about foam rolling, the way he foam rolls and everything, like, but uh, I roomed him in Australia, and that was a serious experience, like, and, uh, <laughs> Tell us, though. No, not, I, no that's, that, yeah. that can't be told, like, he'd be laughing if he listened, he'd yeah. be laughing, like, but uh, he's a great lad, me and I get on well, and he basically done my master's for me this year, so. <laughs> that's often, yeah. big, big thank you for that, lad. <laughs> and then lastly, who is the... Um, Obviously, it could be the captain, but the one with the most presence in the team that gets everybody motivated. Kieran, Kieran probably actually does most of the talking. Kieran McGarry, mm-hmm. um, Potty, Potty absolutely leads by example on the pitch, and whenever he speaks, you know he commands attention because he doesn't speak that often. But Kieran does a lot of the talking, and then I think even what he said after the the Kerry game sort of summed him up too, like but. He uh, really wears his heart in his sleeve, but every, everybody sort of, it, it's got to the stage now where everybody has that much respect for each other that if anybody's talking, mm-hmm. everybody really buys in and listens, like, whereas sometimes in the past it would have been somebody talking and everybody would have been nearly rolling their eyes as if, oh, here we go yeah. again, but um, there's, there's serious respect and everybody is, is adding value. Mm-hmm. Right, well, I'm done. Uh, agonizing news but thank you so much Con, Nell and Darren for joining me tonight for the chat show and if you can't or are unable to watch this it's available on the podcast and the links will be underneath all of this so thanks again and enjoy the celebrations and I can't wait for the night to be here in the club so we can celebrate the three days together thank you. Thank you. Thank you. all right thank you.